the S&P 500 has done pretty well in the past years. But what if you could 2x that? The SSO ETF promises just that, but is it too good to be true? Well, bearing in mind the S&P's run both in the past one year and in the past decade, this would be a really good deal, right? Well, yes and no. What this fund does is it uses leverage to magnify the daily return of the S&P 500. And anytime you hear the word leverage, you need to pause, think a little bit and understand what is going on beneath the hood. So let's do this in this video. Hi, my name is Ognan, and after achieving financial freedom, I created this channel to help people looking to do the same. The ProShares Ultra S&P 500 ETF was established in 2006 and seeks to deliver 2x the daily returns of the S&P 500 index. For all my European friends out there, there is a USITS ETF which is the equivalent and seeks to deliver 2x the daily results of the S&P 500 as well. Its name is x trackers S&P 500 2x Leverage Daily Swap Usage ETF. What is very important to understand is that these types of leveraged ETFs invest in financial instruments that aim to deliver that amplified return, not in the stocks making up the S&P 500 themselves. Usually, these instruments are swap agreements, options and other complex financial wizardry. Now, some stocks might be present in the fund, but you aren't promised that in any way and don't know if tomorrow that might change because the fund managers have found a better way to deliver the returns. And so right here, you need to stop and ask yourself if you actually want to invest in the companies making up the S&P 500 for the long term or are just looking to amplify the returns of the index because you believe it is going way up in the coming years. Because if you're looking to own the companies, then the leveraged ETF structure won't be ideal for you. However, if you are looking to magnify the long-term results of the S&P 500, then this leveraged fund might be exactly what you need. But what does a leveraged ETF mean exactly? The term leverage in finance comes from the use of leverage in the real world. Just like if you use leverage, you can lift heavier objects than you usually would be able to. When you use debt for your investments, you will be able to achieve higher returns than you normally would be able to. Consider this. If you have an asset that is worth $100, and you buy it with $50 of your own money, but the other $50 are taken as debt, you have the following situation. Let's say the interest on your debt is 5% and the asset goes up by 20% to $120. Well, in that case, your asset will be $120. When you pay back your debt with the interest, you will return to the lender $55, which leaves you with 65. This means that you made a profit of $15. $15 is 30% of the original 50 you started with, which is a 50% bigger return than if you had just bought the asset with $100 of your own money, because then you would have made 20% when it goes up to 120. This is essentially how this works with every leveraged product. As long as the conditions are good and the assets are growing more than it costs to borrow the money, everything is sunshine and rainbows, until it isn't. Because in our previous example, if the asset doesn't go up but down by 20%, basically from 100 to 80, then what happens is you still owe 55 to the lender. That leaves you with $25 from your original 50 you put from your own money, which is 50% loss. However, if you had bought the asset with your money entirely, then you would have only lost the 20%. As the saying goes, leverage cuts both ways. However, all these theoretical explanations and warnings don't change the fact that SSO has destroyed the S&P ETF in the past decade. In the past 10 years, SSO has made 468%, while the standard S&P 500 ETF has achieved the modest 175. And if we compare them using PortfolioVisualizer.com, we can see even more clearly the difference. Here, the green line is the normal S&P and the blue, the SSO ETF. Had you invested 10K into S&P 10 years ago, they would have turned into $31,000, which is definitely not bad. But had you done it in SSO, you would have made almost $54,000. Here we can see that the average annualized return of the S&P is 12.78%, while for the SSO, it is 19.4%. I hope you now understand why people like this ETF. And it makes sense. The USA large cap companies led by big tech have been on a tear in the past decade. As I already explained, if you add leverage to an asset that is going up, your results will improve dramatically. 
Now, unfortunately, I have not bought this fund years ago and I did not enjoy these gains. But if you want to see which are my top four stocks and ETS for the current economic and geopolitical environment we are in, then go to the link in the description and I will send it to your email address for free. All right, so if this strategy to leverage the S&P is so awesome and it has consistently beaten the index itself, what's the catch? Why isn't everyone and their mother yolowing their life savings in it? Well, because as I said, leverage cuts both ways. The reason why leveraged ETFs are up so much more than the index they follow in bull markets is the same reason why in bear markets they get slaughtered. Fortunately, we have a recent example to draw conclusions from. The S&P 500 was down almost 25% in the first 10 months of 2022. For the same time frame, SSO had dropped with almost 46%. So you can start to see what the disadvantage of having such an ETF is. When the market is going up, it's great and the party is running. However, when the market goes down, things get really, really ugly really fast. And even if we get into a sideways market, you are going to be screwed by the high expense ratio, which will be eating away at your investment. Unlike the most famous S&P 500 ETFs, which are among the cheapest in the market and have fees in the case of the Vanguard's one VOO of 0.03%, SSO has an expense ratio of 0.91%, which you will be paying each year no matter the return. This is normal since this type of ETF requires active management of the asset, as we saw earlier in the video when I explained that it doesn't simply buy the stocks from the S&P 500 index. Now, if you're a more observant person, you have probably noticed that whether in bull or in bear markets, the SSO results are never exactly two times the results of the S&P. And this is where the main danger of the ETF lies. You see, the goal of the fund is to deliver two times the daily returns of the S&P. What that means is that there is no promise that the leveraged ETF is going to deliver 2x the weekly or monthly, let alone annual return of the S&P 500 index. In order to understand why that is, we have to visualize it with a little bit of math. Here is a hypothetical example. Let's say that on day one, an index starts with a value of 100 and a leveraged ETF that seeks to double the return of the index starts at a 100. If the index draws by 10 points on day one, it has a 10% loss and a resulting value of 9. Assuming it achieved its stated objective, the leveraged ETF would therefore drop 20% on that day and have an ending value of $80. On day 2, if the index rises 10%, the index value increases to 99. For the ETF, its value for day 2 would rise by 20%, which means the ETF would have a value of $96. On both days, the leveraged ETF did exactly what it was supposed to do. It produced daily returns that were two times the daily index returns. But let's look at the results over the two-day period. The index lost 1% because it fell from 100 to 99, while the 2x leveraged ETF lost 4% because it fell from 100 to 96 dollars. That means that over the two-day period, the ETF's negative returns were four times that of the index it follows instead of two times the return. You can see how that daily goal results in a vastly different result over the long term. So why is that such a risk, you may ask? Well, because when the market drops hard, the daily leverage exacerbates the losses and then it will take longer for the leveraged ETF to return back to the level prior to the market downturn than it would take for the S&P 500 index. This is because of simple math. When an investment drops with large amounts, it requires an even larger amount in percentage terms for it to recover to the previous point where it drops from. If an investment goes down from $100 to $50, this is a 50% drop. And in order for that investment to recover to its previous $100 point, it now has to go up by 100% because 50 has to double in order to become 100 again. And the bigger the numbers get, the more extreme the recovery has to be. For example, if an investment drops from $200 to $50, this is a 75% drop. And in order for it to go back to $200, it now has to experience a 300% increase. So by looking at this, you can now understand why a sharp, violent bear market can wipe out the majority of the value of the ETF and then make the fund lag the original index it is tracking for years and years ahead. This combined with the fact that you have absolutely no visibility over what the returns are going to be in the long run because of the daily target we already talked about, makes this leveraged S&P 500 ETF a highly volatile and unpredictable investment. This is especially true when it comes to one-day sharp market crashes. Because the goal of SSO is to achieve 2x the daily return of the S&P 500, 
If the index crashes with 50% in a day, the leveraged ETF gives you minus 100% return, which means your investment goes to zero. Now, while that sounds scary and you should certainly have it in mind, let's examine how likely it is to happen. The largest daily drop in the S&P 500 was 20.47% on October 19, 1987. So, as a start, it is good to know that the index has never fallen with more than 21% in a single day. So, basically, the odds of it dropping with 50% in a day are not zero, but are pretty low. And by the way, if anything like that happens, the markets will be stopped. This is called circuit breaker. If the S&P 500 falls by more than 20% within one trading day, all markets in the USA will be stopped for the remainder of the day, as we can see here on Nasdaq's website. This basically means that it is impossible for the S&P 500 to be allowed to drop by more than 20% in a day, which means that your leveraged ETF is protected by regulations from a total wipeout. You can still lose a significant amount of capital, but you won't go to zero. Because remember, the leverage is reset daily, which means that in order for you to go to zero, there have to be several consecutive days of 20% drops in the S&P 500. Here is the math behind it. If the S&P drops by 20% in a day, a 2x leveraged ETF drops by 40%. So out of 100 doors, you have 60. Then, if the same thing happens on the next day, your 60 doors become 36, because 40% of 60 is 24, and 60 minus 24 is 36. Then if that happens the third day, you are left with 21 doors and 60 cents. If it happens for the fourth day, you are left with $12.96 and so on and so forth. Basically, for your investment to go to zero, we will need to have weeks and weeks of the S&P falling with 20% every day. And if that happens, probably we were hit by an asteroid or a nuclear war has begun, at which point I don't think it matters what's in your portfolio. So based on all of my analysis, I think the chances of your investment in this leveraged ETF to go to zero are almost non-existent. However, even if it happens for only two or three days, you have to remember our little lesson about how it takes a lot more percentages for a fallen investment to go back to break even than the percentages it went down by. So this is definitely something to worry about. This is the major reason why I think this should never be a core holding in your portfolio and the thing that you are betting your retirement on. If you want to learn more about what types of investments I like for the goals of achieving stable and predictable passive income that will give you financial freedom and allow you to retire either earlier or with additional money when you reach your retirement age, then I invite you to join my free investing masterclass for which you can find the link in the description. All right, so what is my final conclusion about the ETF and how would I use it? Of course, you have to remember that I cannot give you advice on how you should use it. I'm just sharing my thoughts here. In my opinion, this leveraged ETF product is great for two types of people. The first type is a more active investor who I would personally even call more of a trader who goes in and out of markets frequently and does some technical analysis as well as trying to predict the market movement on a weekly or monthly basis. If you are the type of person who can accurately predict when the markets are going to crash and avoid those horrific 40 or even 60% drawdowns in the ETF, then you will probably do fantastic with it. The second type is the very long-term investor who is a firm believer that the S&P 500 will continue to deliver great results for the next decades like it has for the past ones. For that type of person who is also able to stomach the extreme volatility of the fund, this might be a good bet that amplifies the returns they would already expect based on their thesis about the top 500 companies in the USA. However, if I was in the place of any of those two types, I still wouldn't bet on such an investment with the majority of my portfolio because of the extreme volatility and all of the risks we already discussed. Both in investing in general and especially for such types of investment products, you need to be educated and not blindly look at past performance and hope the same will repeat in the future. And since the investing education is the primary reason this channel exists, I invite you to check out this video that should have appeared on your screen already. I will see you there.